Hey everyone, welcome back to the 6.5 Summit. We're here in day three, IoT Edge Track. I'm Daniel Newman, one of the hosts here at the 6.5. What an event we've had so far. Very excited for this next spotlight session. We've got Tom Mueller, Executive VP and General Manager, IoT Systems Product Group at Semtech joining for the first time. That was a mouthful. Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's always good to get new voices on the 6.5. I think uh, we've got to be getting near a thousand executives now that have come onto the show. Very excited to chat with you today. Let's do the quick uh, back, the backdrop here because Semtech is a very important company in the semiconductor space, but not necessarily the company that rolls off the tongue and everybody can immediately tell you what exactly you do. So give us the quick, who is Semtech? So Semtech is a semiconductor company that has been around for over 60 years. Prior to acquiring Sierra Wireless, Semtech was involved in three very interesting business areas. Uh, one of them is sort of in the, the uh, inside of the data centers, making sure that as traffic gets faster and faster, that the information that goes from node to node or subsystem to subsystem can be transmitted with high integrity. Another business that they have is uh, in, in protective semiconductors. So if you have a smartphone, if you have a set of uh, earbuds, chances are there are multiple protective semiconductors inside of those products. They come from Semtech. And then the third business that uh, uh, Semtech has is related to communications technologies, communications transceivers and chips that are very germane to the IoT space. And they're the inventors of LoRa, the long range technology that is becoming the standard for uh, low power wide area communications and sensor networks. Yeah, I, was, I was gonna ask if you knew LoRa, but I knew you knew. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, hey, you ever, do you know LoRa? Do you know LoRa, L-O-R-A. L-O-R-A, and, and something I've written a bit about and actually, uh, you know, I, I covered some of your most recent announcements around Laura and you know, you, you've done a really good job in that space. Very important for really making IOT become a reality as we've been told uh, of it's all, all of its potential, Tom. Um, look, you've got a pretty rich history in IOT, um, you know, GE, Sierra, and now Semtech, but the, the, the market, the definition, how people talk about IOT, you know, how do you, with all this experience, kind of explain IoT to people and, and its progress? Because we've heard so much for so long about the promise, but where are we at? So, you know, I have, I think, a, a bit of a unique perspective on the IoT market and the IoT business. I cut my teeth in the industrial automation business many, many years ago, right at the time where discrete automation systems were becoming networked, microprocessor powered. And there was a huge digital, digital transformation that took place in a very short period of time in industrial automation. And really what industrial automation was about was being able to measure things autonomously, control them, report on them, and, and bubble up information that was of value to people so that you could run processes safely and get insights to Im Im important manufacturing processes. When I fast forward decades to where we are now, you know, I, I see that uh, IoT is, is in many ways industrial automation or information systems on a much grander scale, on a global scale, where communications technologies have really removed the barriers of wires. And unlike many of the digital technologies we deal with today, the interesting thing for me about the IOT space is that a lot of the things that we're connecting, a lot of the things that we're sensing don't have a human on the other end. And when you don't have a human on the other end, it makes things a lot more difficult to manage. It makes things a lot more difficult to make sustainably uh, relevant to a business. So, uh, you know, I think that there, there's um, a, a lot of barriers to the IoT space that are about to fall because communications are becoming ubiquitous in everything we do. The costs of communication are falling. And I think uh, the key to moving forward in IoT is really about making the communications and the access to information 
seamless, seemingly boundless, and easy to consume. Yeah, I would agree with all that. I would also say all this communications connectivity, all the ambient connected technologies is also going to have a pretty big impact and see a wave of AI infused growth. And maybe we'll talk about that in a bit, but um, I want to talk about the acquisition of CR Wireless by Semtech. The, you know, based on its portfolio, I think some would say that, you know, the two are competing and, you know, maybe there isn't as much synergy or maybe it was just buying market share, but their technologies were different. And so, you know, the combination of low power wide area and cellular um, could offer something unique. I have to envision that that was part of what was seen, but talk a little bit about that and talk about, you know, how perhaps the two technologies that come to, have come together through those acquisitions maybe can speed or drive the market forward. So, so I think, uh, Prior to being acquired by Semtech, you can imagine what it was like inside of Sierra Wireless, where Sierra Wireless was a, a company almost 30 years old, steeped in the cellular industry. And really, we call ourselves a cellular first company. Everything we did in IoT was cellular first. And the primary tool we had in our toolbox for communications was cellular, whether that was broadband or LPWA. On the other side of the house, in the Semtech side of the house, the only tool they have in their toolbox is LoRa and FSK sub gigahertz communications. There's never one tool that solves all problems in the toolbox. You know, if everything is is a, a ha if everything's a nail, will you just pull for a hammer? Well, we find that the customers that both Semtech in the LoRa space serve and the customers that Sierra Wireless served in the IoT space, in many cases, we share customers who have actually pre-selected a technology for a particular use case. And they've made this trade-off decision about, I have to go left or I have to go right. If I'm gonna go left, I have to talk to Semtech. If I'm gonna go right, I have to talk to Sierra. Now, when we call on these customers, they know that we're bringing multiple tools and we're giving them an objective view of which tool is appropriate for their use case. And in some cases, as these customers needs evolve, a fusion of those technologies is actually the best life cycle cost solution for them. So the combination of those two technologies in the same toolbox, I think is going to open up a lot of opportunities for us with customers we already own, already serve as their needs emerge and, and really reach uh, mega scale. Yeah, it's kind of like in mobile, you know, the idea that, you know, there's, you know, mid band and low band and high band. And it's like, well, why would, you know, let's only commit to mid band. It's like, no, I mean, obviously the, the way like we see the promise of 5G, Tom, is when, well, frankly, you can move between advanced LTE and different bands of 5G. And, you know, and what I mean is that ability. So kind of having that spectrum, giving your you know, those that are building designs, the flexibility to take advantage of, of all the different network capacity to make sure the connectivity and the, you know, I think that's kind of the metaphor of it all is, you know, more is better in this case. So, you know, with, with all that, you know, goodness, right? You have this broader portfolio, you know, where are you seeing innovation? And, 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 and let me just double back, you know, this event is navigating rough waters. It's about innovating in tough macroeconomic periods. We know consumer is, you know, IOT, there's a lot of excitement, but it's maybe slowed a little bit. Um, at the same time, industrial intelligence is a huge thing. Like is more, is that why is industrial seeing more? Or are we still seeing a lot of consumer innovation or what are you seeing? So I, I think the, the large scale innovation will be continue to be driven by the consumer space. And you use the analogy of the, the 5G technologies embedded on a cell phone. To me, that the, the user of a cell phone doesn't even know whether their call is being served by Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, millimeter wave. It, it just happens seamlessly. That's the kind of seamless serving of communications that we see in the IoT space that we're striving to provide with the combination of Semtech and Sierra Wireless. Now, with the combination of Semtech and Sierra Wireless, the industrial and infrastructure space is where we have a very balanced kind of presence. 
And, and I think that that's where, you know, we will be focusing a lot of the synergy benefits between Semtech and Sierra Wireless. We were geared as a company in Sierra Wireless to serve certain markets. Consumer was not one of them. We were in the industrial mobility, uh, public sector kinds of spaces. And there's a lot of complementary uh, opportunities for us to pair LoRa, sub gigahertz and cellular technologies, whether it's in semiconductors, modules, routers, or our managed connectivity business. Yeah, you know, I love how you kind of tied these threads together, Tom. What I will say is this is, I feel like IoT has been, well, actually 5G is another great example. It's been one of these, like the, it's the most exciting and most promising thing. But to some extent, I would also say it maybe hasn't reached its full potential. And that, you know, while people have been really excited about connecting everything, um, you know, you saw the generative AI buzz come on. You've seen, you know, I just remember like, you know, like I said, in 2018, I wrote a, you know, a, a, a 5G monetization research report. And I know in 23, we're still having uh, debates on what the killer app is. IoT, I think we've accepted, you know, I think we understand how it's being used in manufacturing and how it's being used in consumer. But to some extent, is there a challenge? Is there, are there challenges? I mean, has the market taken off as expected or is there still kind of another wave of takeoff for all this, you know, all these connected devices where, you know, the full potential of IoT will start to maybe get the full appreciation it deserves? I, you know, I, I go back to my dinosaur roots in industrial automation. You know, young kid out of university, one of the first jobs I had was was making a control system operate a pulp mill. And the cost of generating information, generating alerts, alarms, effectively fell to zero. So the, the, the implication of the acquisition cost of information going to zero was let's instrument everything. Let's connect everything. We very quickly found out that just because the costs are lower doesn't mean there's value in more information. And I see the same thing coming with the IOT industry. There are, there's a tremendous amount of fragmentation. Costs are falling. The complexity will be dropping in terms of the barrier to delivering information, there has to be a real business value. And, and the cost of delivery is only one part of the equation. Maintaining, continuing to operate, deliver valuable information that is worth knowing about and acting upon is, is the phase we need to get through. Just because you can do it, just because you can connect it, doesn't mean you should or that people will value it. So we really got to focus on what's the business value? What's the transformative value of the information we're delivering? And is the deployment of the solution sustainable in order to really transform a customer's business? Yeah, I think I think you make a lot of good points there. And, and I do think that that's really the litmus of most things. But you do get peak hype. Like, you know, one of the big themes of this event was, of course, uh, generative AI, chat GPT, and, you know, there's a lot of people getting value from it, but the companies that have actually put it into market right now, I'm pretty sure they're just spending money on it, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and what did I, I've heard everything from 700,000 to millions of dollars a day just to run this thing. And I still don't know, like for a Google, how exactly they're going to monetize um, when it actually makes advertising harder to do, for instance. So, some of this connected, uh, it's about connecting, then it is about really showing business value. And that's why I've always been really very bullish on industrial IoT. And I, and I actually, you know, I've created a very connected ecosystem at work and in my home. And I can tell you, this stuff should and will change the world. But I do think there's still, you know, a little skepticism. And I think that comes from the things you mentioned, you know, people being able to clearly understand, articulate the value. So, you know, as we sort of wrap up this conversation here, you know, what are you most excited about kind of for what lies ahead as it pertains, uh, Tom, to the IoT space? Well, I, I think that um, the, the thing that probably excites me the most is that, you know, you, you, you're talking in the, this conference about navigating troubled waters and think about where we've been in the last three years we've been through covid 
we've come out the other end. We've had supply chain shortages. We're, we're facing inventory excesses. It's like the world is all tipsy turvy through this last three and a half years we've been through. One of the things that has come out of this in, in uh, you know, just very crystal clear form for us is that the need to have access to information that you can act upon, that you can trust, that will, will help you become more efficient, that's here to stay. Nobody would have thought that we could, you know, four years ago, have a meeting like this virtually, let alone run entire companies without having offices. That has underscored the, the um, you know, the, the potential for having things connected and really operating in a different way than we would have thought four years ago was possible. Um, the, the other thing that really I, I find interesting and, and exciting is that more and more power is, is shifting back to the edge. You know, we've gone through this, let's get everything into the cloud. And then it's starting to swing back to the edge. But what we end up with is we now know what belongs in the cloud. We now know what really should be executing at the edge. And we're starting to hit this sort of equilibrium of what belongs where and how do we coordinate them. So I think we're going to see tremendous amounts of change. One, one person in my past once said, it's easy to underestimate what you can accomplish, sorry, easy to overestimate what you can accomplish in three years and equally easy to underestimate what you can do in one. So we've got to focus one year at a time, deliver on our, our goals and, and you know, continuing to make things simpler for our customers one year at a time. The three-year plans will fall into place year by year. No, I, I love that, uh, you know, that anecdote and I've heard similar versions of it, but, uh, you know, I also love the cloud pendulum because it also makes me think of the hybrid cloud thing as well. You know, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's been the edge story is that, you know, not everything will be done in the public cloud and nor will everything be done on prem or at the edge, but we're going to find a balance. And I, uh, uh, interestingly enough, because of low latency and such, a lot more will be done at the edge than people probably thought because it's both, it's not efficient and it's not realistic. And of course, power being a really important thing that we didn't talk much about, but IOT and edge can create a lot of lower power, which is huge for all the sustainability talk that we're doing. And I think that's another conversation, Tom, that we can have at another time. But let's just say this, that we probably overestimated what we could cover in 20 minutes, but I wouldn't underestimate the power of this conversation. And I want to thank you so much for being part of the 6.5 Summit this year, Tom. It's great to have you and Semtech join us for this great event. Thank you very much, Dan. Pleasure to be here. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into this session. It was great to hear from Tom Mueller and from Semtech. IoT, so much going on in this space. This is day three. We are here in the IoT and Edge track. We appreciate you tuning in. Stay with us for so many more segments. If you didn't catch them live, catch them on demand. We appreciate all of you. Got to go from this one, but we'll see you soon.